Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to go over something a little different, something that's come up a few times in the questions, and that's going to be how to paint winter-themed guardsmen. This kind of works for a lot of different armies, not just uh, what we could be talking about. So if you've got historical figures or something like that, this might be a little useful to you too. Now when we talk about winter-themed armies, a lot of people sort of immediately think of white fatigues and icy blue armor and stuff like that. And that's one way of looking at it. But also it's worth thinking about how you're going to base your miniatures. Because I'm sure you can think of a few examples through our own history where troops that were not really prepared for the environment were sent off to fight during the winter. Now as an example, I've got this chap here. Now this is one of the plastic infantry from Warlord Games. This is the US troops. And really, he is painted exactly the same as I would any other soldier. What I've done instead is to look at ways that I can make him look cold. So you see his elbows are tucked in, his shoulders are hunched, you know, his pose just looks like he's huddled in against the cold. And where I can, all of the snow helps me use all of the space on the miniature to tell that story. There's a little dusting of snow on his sleeves, but some of it's collected on his helmet too, where it gets frosty. And of course, plenty of it on the dirt. <laughs> and we'll talk about that later on, how you can base your miniatures for this look. All right, so we'll put him aside and let's look at what people really mean when they ask me, how do you paint Winter Guard? Now I've got here Nighthaunt Gloom and Ulthuan Grey, and these are just fantastic. I love Nighthaunt Gloom. So nice and simple. Now I've primed this Guardsman with a couple of light sprays of Corax white. It's not a pure white, which is quite handy. It's going to work well for what we've got going. But all we need to do now is just cover in all of his fatigues in Nighthorn Gloom. So let's get started on that. Now Nighthorn Gloom is one of those paints. It works similarly to a shade. It'll look quite gloopy coming out of the pot, but you don't want to thin it down with any water. All you want to do is just paint it straight on from the pot all over his fatigues. Try and avoid anywhere that you want to be armor, because I'm going to leave that white, and you'll see what we do with that later on. His equipment, if you do get any on there, doesn't really matter. But just take your time now and fill in all of his fatigues with a quick coat of Nighthaunt Gloom. Now if you do end up with any areas where you go overboard with the old Nighthaunt Gloom, just a quick blap of Althuan Grey will fill that in, and you'll notice no difference once that dries. So I'm just going to make sure all those little areas, there we go, nice and easy, that's all sorted. And our Nighthorn Gloom is finished too. So you see it gives us this cool frosty effect. And that's pretty neat. I like what that's going to do for our armor. So what comes next, let's just block that in with a little bit of Althoon Grey, is actually a dry brush. And conveniently enough, we are still using Althoon Grey. <laughs> so I've got here my dry brush prepped up. And you can use a large, a small, any old dry brush you fancy for this. I'm just going to lightly drag across some of the highlights of the fatigues. And if you get any areas that go almost white, you know, don't worry too much about it. Because that's going to be fixed up when we do our next step to shade them. So you see there, catching on his uh, sleeve, along his trousers, nice and quick. Now with that dry brush applied, we've got that cool, icy, frosty effect all over his fatigues. This is very similar to how I normally paint Guardsmen. What I'm going to do now is skip ahead a little bit because the actual colors I'm going to use aren't important. You can change these up for whatever you want, whichever brand you like using, it's up to you. I'm just going to paint in his equipment, his boots and his skin. We'll just flash ahead, okay? Because like I said, that's however you want it to look. Now I've deliberately stuck to a very narrow palette. In fact, the only real warmth I've got on the miniature is from this reddish leather that I'm going to use. I quite like having just a little bit of warmth there to set things off. As well, I've stuck to a fairly pale skin tone. You might want to use a Kislev Flesh or something, because I figure our dude's probably not getting a lot of sun. Again, anything you can use on the miniature to sort of sell the environment. So what I've got next is my Agrax Earthshade, which is closing without me there. And finally, we're going back to the old ways. We're going to douse this entire miniature <laughs> in Agrax Earthshade. So you don't need to be too careful with this, just getting in and bucket all over the model. Even these lovely white panels. But when you see it collects around here, you can just drag it away 
towards the edges. What we really want is just to put a little bit of tone on the whole thing and Beautiform too. So the whole miniature and then give it about half an hour to dry. Now with the shade dried, this is what we've got and I'm actually quite pleased with how that turned out. We've still got that frosty blue tinge to his, uh, to his uniform where his armor's got a bit of shading and everything just comes together a little better I think. Now I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in the field, white never ever ever stays white. <laughs> so I'm not going to do much to this. If you wanted to, you could paint in you know, all of the flat areas carefully with some Orthuan Grey again. But all I'm going to do is just pick out a couple of edges with it. So we've got that nice sharp highlight in a few places. But I'm not going to go overboard with this. I'm just going to use this to, you know, describe some edges. As well, you might want to touch up his face a little bit. And for that, I'm going to go back to Kislev Flesh. And then I'll give it a quick, very careful uh, Reichland Flesh shade just to tie it all back in. But let's come back once I've done a few of those details and we'll get to his base. Now with just a couple of highlights and his face finished off the way we want, he's looking pretty cool. Now I'm going to go straight to Sterling Mud. I want a, quite a dark brown for the base. You could paint this on with sand if you fancied, however it is you're doing it, but I think a darker tone here is going to look better. Okay, what we want is that sort of deep frozen brown. So a nice dark brown to start off with. <laughs> Make it easy on yourself. So let's just go ahead, put a layer of this on, and then we'll give it you know, time to dry, probably about half an hour. Now once that's had plenty of time to dry, grab yourself a dry brush and I'm going to use Sylvaneth Bark. Now, this is going to give us just enough contrast that we've got, you know, some three-dimensional effect to the dirt there. But I don't want to add a lot of color. You know, it is dark. It's that kind of permafrost grossness we want. We, we want unpleasant. <laughs> so just quickly dry brush this on and let's go on to the next step. Now I've just popped on a couple of grass tufts. And I like using these because of the fact, you know, whatever grass is going to survive into the winter like this is normally that really pokey, hard-wearing stuff. So tufts work pretty well for that. Now I've got some Valhalla and Blizzard, and check this out. We're just going to jam this <laughs> straight out of the pot, and you can be pretty brutal with it. Just poke it in, and especially work it into these tufts. And then, let's pop that aside for a second. Grab yourself one of your old brushes. And you can use this to poke around and work it in, get a slightly more natural looking finish to that snow. So you see it looks here like it's relatively fresh. And I like to try and get it in around the base of these tufts as well. So that it looks like it's frozen to the ground there and it's got a little bit of cover to stay cold. So as much as this as you like, I like to go mad with it <laughs> and then give it you know, some time to dry. Now with plenty of that snow on and the ring around his base painted, we're done. There is our winter themed guardsman. Now like I mentioned, a lot of this is just trying to use all of the space available to help sell the environment. We're telling a story with our miniature. I don't think it's strictly necessary that everything has to be a pristine white for it to look like a winter themed army. Okay, So you can have a lot of fun with this. The actual uniform was really simple, it's all just dry brushing, same as usual with just one or two extra steps to help us sell the look. So, like I said, not really so much a tutorial as just to get you thinking on ways that you could use this on just about any sort of style of miniatures. So hopefully something there was interesting to you. As always, you can drop a comment in the old box below. Both my Twitter and Facebook are linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.